Imagine that you're at home in your kitchen and you're doing popcorn, classic popcorn. Uh, so you put a, take a pot, put 0.5 centimeters of oil in it, put it on the stove, turn it to the maximum level. Now, if you gather friends, your family members around your kitchen and you could really quite easily make, a, let's say, a small study about what their expectations and their attitude is about the future. So as soon as you turn on the stove and uh, you have the people around you, they will be the first ones starting to say, yeah, no, 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 now it's going to happen. Now the first popcorn pops. Um, but of course, in the beginning, nothing's going to happen. And these are kind of the over-optimists. So the people that think, well, next year, everything's going to be different. Uh, everything's going to change, but in the end, nothing has really happened. Um, so, the pot is getting warmer, and now the pessimists come. They will be the first family members that say no. Nothing's going to happen. Let's take chips, snacks, other stuff, and watch the TV show without popcorn. Um, but of course, these people are also wrong, because just as in the last 90 seconds, nothing has happened. Does not mean that in the next 90 seconds, nothing will happen. So, um, people, or the realists, or those to, who focus on foresight management, trend analysis, and so on, they probably take an iPhone or another smart device and just search or Google for what is happening when we're cooking popcorn. And they find out, well, a popcorn pops between 163 and 168 degrees of Celsius. And with the underlying physical process, with the starch around the popcorn and so on, and the thickness of it, they can calculate when the first popcorn pops. So they apply logic. And let's assume now um, the first popcorn popped after 2 minutes 19. Now, the linear thinkers among your family members, they will say, hmm, all right, so in 2 minutes 19, the next popcorn will pop. But of course, this is not true. These are linear thinkers. And we have reached a kind of a tipping point. And with this tipping point, it does not go pop, pop, pop. It goes pop, 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 and the whole pop pot is full. And this is kind of the nature of uh, the nature of technological innovation, and it's the same that's happening with this trend, this digital transformation that is currently going on in all the major industries. And with Industry 4.0 or all these buzzwords, it's the same. And we are reaching one tipping point after the other, also in the injection molding industry. Yeah, I'm, as uh, we already mentioned, a product manager for the digital portfolio of Engel. Uh, that's kind of summarized under our campaign, Inject 4.0. And today I'd like to introduce you to um, what we understand about, so what is driving this digitalization, what we, how we define it, what is our approach, what is Angle's strategy in supporting the customer on this way. Um, and I'd also like to start out with the mega trends because um, this is kind of the reason why so many people talk about uh, digitalization. There are all these buzzwords with industrial Internet of Things, uh, Industry 4.0, and so on. But the current megatrends actually lead us to use such technology. Um, and they require a digital transformation. Just think of uh, yeah, globalization, demographic changes, um, that make it harder and harder also or lead us to produce in emerging markets, but it's hard to keep the standards and the quality of the products in such markets at the same level. Or um, the global lack of skilled labor. It's harder and harder for our customers and also for us to get talented people all around the globe that have the quality and the qualification uh, to succeed. Scarce resources and energy. Of course, we talked about sustainability also and the climate change. Um, the cost for energy and resources increasing. This is definitely a major challenge for us. The technological developments 
and the Global Knowledge Society. And at the same time, when you think of an injection molding cell 10 or 15 years ago, and today, you saw the example uh, before of Scania, how such a cell could look like, or how such a process could look like, how complex it can get, and this complexity. At the same time, with the decrease in quality level and skill set of the people, is, yeah, makes me a little bit anxious also sometimes on how we can cope with these drivers. Um, and of course, individualization, not only on the consumer side, but mostly there. And also the need to exhaust all these uh, possibilities and the potential that is underlying this technology. So customers of us, they ask themselves too, how should I cope with this trend? What does it mean for me? Um, how should we cope with these challenges actually then? And from my perspective, often the customers come and they just ask, well, uh, I need digitalization. I need to connect my machine. I need data from my machine. But this is not actually the, the major use case or their intention. It's the focus should lie on the underlying intention of what they actually do with this information that they get. So it's not about data collection. It's about generating information and acting upon this information that we get out of devices, for instance, or machines. So I, I don't think that companies need digitalization. I think that companies and their customers need solutions to do their jobs better, to do their jobs more effectively or more efficiently. Uh, and the same is true also for Engel and as a user. I mentioned also Engel, and digitalization plays a major role also for us, um, not only in providing these solutions that are on the Inject 4.0, but also um, applying these possibilities in our own production. So on the one hand, Angle, of course, as an injection molding machine supplier with all the great portfolio of technologies, services, automation, and so forth. Um, we are coming from a side that's highly customizing the machines with hundreds, thousands of options, more than a BMW could ever have. Um, and of course, this poses a challenge on us, but we had to cope with this challenge ever since, to have a lot size of one. Um, but at the same time, of course, we have more and more pressure to optimize the efficiency regarding the cost side of producing a lot size one. So our goal is to invest, for instance, also in software to monitor the processes, to optimize the processes, um, to have self-driving logistics systems, and so on, To improve the cost efficiency, but keep the flexibility that we're having. Uh, as a provider, our customer's role is a little different. They are, you, you've heard it before, um, usually injection molding makes sense uh, uh, with goods from, or with lot sizes from hundreds of thousands to millions in a year. And in many of the industries that we're in, we are experiencing, the customers experience the pressure that they either have to customize their products, if they're producing end consumer products, for instance, um, or they have to reduce or adapt to the actual demand that's on the market. So they have to reduce the lot sizes, but of course their customers don't pay more for each good just as they uh, order 10,000 instead of 100,000. So, the flexibility has to increase on the customer side, but the cost efficiency is rather high at the moment. And with this transformation, um, or with this challenge, we are uh, supporting as Engel um, to go together with our customers on this way to the, to the vision of the smart factory. And Engel sees himself as a, or we see ourselves as a piece of this puzzle and I talked to several uh, uh, customers already about their current situation and their strategies, and I can tell you it's different every time. So the picture that they are drawing is different, is their own picture. You cannot go to Amazon and buy a an, uh, digital package, and then you can take it off this topic. Um, but we are providing a kind of a portfolio that's part or could be part of such a picture. 
in the injection molding context. So we are trying to leverage this full potential that is underneath uh, the injection molding industry. And we have built this kind of framework that's consisting of three main pillars to the, which are essentially facilitators to move towards the smart factory. First of which is smart machine. Here we're focusing on process stability through, uh, developing, through development of assistance systems. With smart service, we are more and more fostering um, an increase of availability of the equipment that is at our customer's place by optimizing how it's maintained. And with smart production, we are aiming for a higher level of productivity and efficiency essentially in the production process uh, through a transparency along the value chain. Um, and I'm going to dig into each of these three uh, quickly to show you what is existing already and what the philosophy of Angle is underneath each of these pillars. <coughs> so smart machine is a rather nice example that can be easily compared with what's currently going on in the car industry. Um, if you're buying a new car, um, I drove a rental car yesterday uh, to Munich in the morning and there were several assistance systems keeping me straight on the road, even though I was a little sleepy. Uh, it woke me up again, it told me to, to get to the steering wheel again. So there were a lot of different features and assistance systems helping me and also helping you getting to a parking lot, keeping the same speed and so on. And we'll see, and you see today already where this is going to to the self-driving car, autonomous driving. And the same is kind of happening in the industry right now, where Engel is dealing with this topic of um, how to help our customers in setting up processes and in compensating for fluctuations. And by that, by these assistance systems that we're having and combining them, as it's happening in the car industry, uh, the vision is that we are achieving a self-optimizing machine. Um, why do we need these assistance systems? Because there are many challenges when you look at a specific injection molding machine and its process and many influential factors that can influence actually the productivity and the product quality itself. Let it be the raw material, the drying of it, the ambient conditions, the quality level of the personnel or also temperature control and water supply all having an influence on product quality and essentially then the productivity. And our portfolio, that's kind of, our assistance systems are called IQ products. These stand for intelligent quality. And they are aiming for maximizing the process stability. And the oldest feature or the first feature that we released in this family is called IQ weight control. It's a software that compensates for deviations in the injection phase, and by that keeps the, const, uh, the shot weight of the parts constant. IQ clamp control, on the other hand, is a feature that helps you set up a process, helps the operator save time and, and set up the optimal value for the clamp force. As we are calculating, based on our sensors, uh, the mold breathing, and by that, the customer gets an objective clamp force, and most cases, a lower clamp force than he would set. So he would save also cost on maintaining the mold, for instance. IQ flow control is the third feature in uh, this family, which is dealing with the temperature control process, which I think is also a really high potential part of the injection molding process, and this software automatically uh, and intelligently optimizes this control process, and by that you can save energy, you have process safety and higher process stability, and transparency over what is going on inside your mold. And finally, IQ vibration control um, is a standard feature that's running on our automation equipment, on our linear robots, that's compensating external disturbances on the robot movement. 
So for instance, when the gripper is rather complex or the clamp closes during the movement of the robot, it can cause vibrations. And these vibrations are compensated for in real time with this feature. And you increase, of course, the repeatability and the positioning speed. Um, in the next minute, I want to show you just a little more information about the first of these four features, because I think regarding all the discussions about recycling and also material, this is uh, the one that you can identify yourself the most. Um, IQ weight control, it's a software that identifies changes in the injection volume and the changes in the viscosity of the material during the injection and automatically adjusts in real time the point where it switch over, the height of the holding pressure, the speed profile, uh, and for instance also the opening and closing of hot run nozzles if such are also integrated in the machine. You see this here in the graph, this is an injection pressure curve over the screw stroke. So the screw moving forward and the pressure increasing. And this green line is a so-called reference curve. So when you set up the machine and want to go into serial production, our customers then start the referencing and the machine selects one of these, uh, after 20 cycles, one of these curves and then compares them in real time with every shot with the actual curve. And of course, if for instance the steepness goes up, but the volume is the same, you have a higher viscosity in the material because you need more pressure to push through the same amount of material. And based on these changes, we adapt then, for instance, the switchover point. I've also taken with me one example, what is kind of uh, the benefit of one of our customers using this. Um, this is a vibration head on an electric shaver that is uh, being produced by Procter & Gamble. Um, and on a, a hybrid machine with an electric injection unit um, with PPS and a flow length of four centimeters and a minimal wall thickness of 0 0.3 millimeters. And here, their standard process was already, let's say, rather stable. You see here the shot counter and the shot weight on the y-axis. And you see this variability here leading to a range on the shot weight of 0.02 grams on this part that's roughly 5.2 grams uh, of weight. And by activating this feature with the same product, we reduced this variability by 85% down to 0 0.03 grams of, of shot weight variability. So they reduced significantly, of course, their scrap rate. But such a product actually depends of course, also on your requirement on product quality. Because when I produce a fitting where I have 10 grams of variability and I say, well, mm, does not matter to me, it's still a good part. But if you produce these parts and you put them in and you find out later, damn it, there was something missing. It was a short shot on one of these parts. You can throw away the whole thing. So the criticality is also mattering here. So let's move forward to the second uh, pillar of uh, Inject 4.0, which is smart service. As I mentioned, service is about the availability of the machine, about how to optimize the maintenance or how we're doing maintenance on our uh, equipment. And the challenges today are, first of all, the communication channels between a supplier and a customer that are various between maintenance guys, purchasing department and salespeople, uh, our customer service department, even me, discussing with customers and so on. Which leads to, of course, a high effort to collect the necessary information if there is a problem, if there are issues on the machines and so on, if a service is necessary, what is the service history and so on. And obviously also, in most cases up right now, when there is a problem, we are reacting to it. So. If something happens, we have these fire brigade events, let's say, f doing firefighting, uh, and everything has to be solved really quickly because the machine has to run. Uh, we have to deliver the parts and so on, so the pressure is increasing, of course, on this part and on this end, and 
we want to avoid this in the future. Um, another reason is root cause analysis. Um, sometimes the customer calls and tells us, well, the machine is loud. So, but what do we do with this information now? What is the reason why a machine has a failure? And sometimes we fight only symptoms and not the reason, not the root cause. Um, and these strategies that we're having now, they, as we are reacting, we have an unexpected downtime. And this is also what we want to avoid with smart service in the future, and also increasing, of course, in the future, the availability of a technician and a spare part as we want to predict when something is going to happen on the machine. How do we do this? We have a family that's called eConnect with a brand new customer portal that's going to be released in the next months. It's an online portal that you run in the browser that is free of charge for all of our Angle customers and where they can, for instance, check all the service history. They can communicate with the service people. Uh, they have a spare part uh, functionality in there to check the availability and the prices. They have a planned overview of which equipment they have bought from us, a whole documentation of hydraulic schemes and so forth. And in this portal, we have included a new service that we have just uh, presented last year in October at the K Show, which is called eConnect Monitor. And this is actually where we aim for avoiding these unexpected downtimes that are happening when a wear part, for instance, um, is damaged, is having wear and is influencing product quality. For instance, think of the plasticizing screw or also other components where we are developing ser a service after a service, monitoring these components, analyzing the data of them. So we're sending the data from these machines to Angle to analyze them and to give back the result in the eConnect portal on what is going on with their equipment and if they get, if the people can get home on Friday and be sure that the machine is running on Monday still. Um, a, another major product, which I think is also important for Norway, if you think of how big Norway is, is our remote service. So if there is an issue right now, if you don't have any remote service, you send a service technician by plane somewhere, only to find out what the problem is going back with coming back with the spare part or with an expert to solve a problem and so forth. And for this, we have a, a package, a remote service where we can connect to the machine remotely look like you would imagine with an IT guy looking at your laptop in your office when you have an issue. The same is done here with the experts from Engel uh, who can do conference calls and via this platform uh, share and exchange data and look at what is going on uh, on premise. And finally, also a, a nice app that's also uh, kind of included or is free of charge, downloadable in the app stores of uh, the iPhone or the Play Store of Google and the iOS Store, Windows Store, um, where you as a customer can then regularly and globally check the condition of the machine and the production status without any additional software or investment. Yeah, the third part of Inject 4.0 is smart production. And as I mentioned here, it's about having a transparency along the value chain. Uh, think of uh, the horizontal and vertical integration of your production subsidiaries uh, and plants. And this is kind of the first challenge, to have transparency about what is going on inside your production when you're sitting in the office. Um, how can you make sure that you effectively use all your equipment? That a machine is not standing still and the three others are running 24-7, so why is this machine not used? Or how to make sure that you, in a timely manner, send uh, the orders to your customers? Um, what if you come back on Monday to the office and you want to know why did the machine not run on Saturday evening? What was going on there? What, is, what has happened to the process parameters? What did someone do? Did someone change something on the machine? So you have, 
you need to have a seamless documentation over what is going on inside your production um, and the history of it. Um, how to efficiently plan and perform maintenance and more how to avoid these firefightings um, and how to uh, optimize also the energy consumption. And for that, we have one major solution, which is a manufacturing execution system. So a system that actually helps you to connect the machines, get an overview over the plants, and also connect to the shop floor, uh, to the office floor, from the shop floor. And this is authentic. Um, it's an MES software that consists of different modules depending on what the customer actually wants to perform. So if he wants to do order planning, if he wants to uh, do maintenance, if he wants to, for instance, what is quite important in injection molding, manage the recipes and the parts data sets. So for instance, done in setup. Um, and of course, such a software has to be open and has to use standards for connecting these machines. And this is where also, for instance, Euromap comes into play with the latest activities and where we not only connect angle machines, I like angle machines, that's why they're here on the slide, um, but also other machines, of course, can be connected with this software. Yeah, when you think of this portfolio, I just, for you to better understand it, I draw, uh, drew a small picture of how this could look like if you're using these solutions. So first of all, you have your independent equipment, which can be smarter than it is today. For instance, including assistant systems from the IQ family. Now, if you want to make your production process and your value chain transparent, you need to connect these machines to a central software, like for instance, Authentic or another MES, to overwatch and optimize your processes. And then if Angle comes into play, there of course are much more possibilities to share information, share data from the angle machines, and by that being able to use additional functionality that angle can and will provide in the next years more and more. These are coming from the smart service department. Well, this was it. Thank you for the attention.